You now have assets that have been properly set up as first class USD. For this part of the lesson, you will play the part of an assembly artist who is going to build a scene using the kit of parts you just prepared. This will give you a sense of how different artists on the same team can work together using USD and Solaris. So select File New. Let's start with a brand new scene. When we do that, we need to set the project again. So we're going to go Set Project. Go to the Projects directory and Market Lesson and accept. Go File, Save As, and this is pointed at the right directory. If not, click on Dollar Job and go Market Scene Assembly dot hip and accept. So let's go over to here and go New Pane Type, Solaris. We're going to get Layout Asset Gallery. And this is a gallery of assets that come with Houdini, that ship with Houdini, that you could start to use to lay out a scene. But that's not what we want to use. We want to use the assets that we already built. So we're going to go click on the gear here and say Create New Asset Data File. And we're going to call this Market USD Assets and press Accept. And this creates a new empty database. Now we want to go and click on this button, which is to add a new asset directory. We're going to go here. We're going to go dollar job or dollar hip USD and press accept and we want to set up here for variants we want geo and MTL so all the various uh, variants we want those to come up into the directory so we click OK and it will go off and think about it in the meantime you'll notice that it's actually rendering out thumbnails and those thumbnails will get used uh, in the gallery. Okay, so now that that's uh, complete, you can see the gallery is filled with all of the assets we just worked on. Uh, you see how it has the different burial variants, the different basket variants, the different books. Uh, it's got the jars all there. So we've got a fair number of the assets that we um, set up are now available in this gallery, and we're going to use that. So the first thing we're going to do is actually we probably should have set this earlier to a Solaris desktop. Now this um, gets rid of the gallery. So we've got to bring back the gallery. So Solaris Layout Asset Gallery and there it is. Uh, and there's our scene. Um, just like with Spacebar D, uh, let's background, let's go dark with that and uh, save as the default so that we have that the next time we come in as well and we can turn off this grid uh, for now. So take this uh, gallery here, we're going to get one of the elements, the tent, we're going to drag that into the scene and it's just going to place it there at the origin. And there we go. And you can see there it's sort of set up in the relationship to the origin. And what you're seeing in here is the proxy geometry. So we're seeing the proxy. That's the render geometry there. Uh, but we like the fact that we're looking at proxy geometry because as we put more and more assets in, that's going to be more efficient. Let's go to the stage and we see this is the asset reference here. And we see this up here. And what we want to do is we want to change that to slash geo slash tent. So that means that down here in the uh, scene graph, you'll see slash geo slash tent. And you'll see if we open that up, you'll see all the different parts there as well. Now, while we're doing that, uh, let's go back to the layout gallery and let's add the table in. And that puts that right here in front. And if we want to, we can select it and just take the handle here. We want to, oh. Well, that is because I think if we go back to our stage, we need to have that selected. There we go. Now we can go and 
rotate this. So if you have this selected, you see that the table doesn't even exist in here. So it's very important that you have the, the most recent um, asset that we brought in uh, selected. So the, each of these have been brought in as a reference. And just like we did with the other one, let's put slash geo slash. And that puts those two uh, inside on the scene graph together. I think we need to click, select that. And then we can go and move that around as well if we want to. So now we're going to add a grid node. We'll do that right here in the network. We're going to put that here, set the display flag, and we're going to call this uh, ground. And we're going to change this to slash geo slash. So the ground service is now in there with the table and the tent. And we're going to use that because some of the things we're going to place later, it's good to have a ground surface uh, to work off of. And later we'll turn the ground surface into more something a little more interesting. But for now, um, that's a good place to start. Now, what we'd like to do is go back to the layout asset gallery. And we're going to bring in, let's bring in a bookshelf that we're going to push back into here and maybe tilt that a little bit and then we'll do the other bookshelf and we'll move that back and just tumble around we'll go there and maybe just rotate a little bit there so there we go and maybe push that back a little bit and if we go back to the stage we'll go back to this one push that one back a little bit as well so now we've got our simple scene set up and it's all these objects sitting there and they've all been done using references and um, these two we want to make sure that they are also slash geo and slash geo just to keep things organized we want all of this geometry that we're bringing in to go into the same place. Now one thing that's interesting about this is you can sort of reorganize this. So if you decide, you know what, I just for logic's sake, I'm going to have the ground service be the first thing. Uh, you can do that. It does not change what's going on in the scene graph. It just changes a little bit your organization here. So you've got some flexibility with that um, as you're building up your networks. So there we go. We've got the scene set. Now we're going to uh, populate the shelves with some jars. Uh, and that will take uh, take advantage of instancing. So let's go do that.